there, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Hearts Final 4 New World of America. Let us continue on from where we last left off. So, Kennedy is currently doing his grand tour across the United States. Um, we've been getting a ton of events uh, regarding that. So, we haven't actually advanced that much uh, time-wise. On the Florida or Let's Head Home. President Bobby Kennedy stepped down into the hotel lobby. Vice President William Guy trailing along with a host of Secret Service agents. The Montgomery Hotel had been pleasant, but with George Wallace's comments, it was time to leave. With fresh polished shoes uh, clacking down the marble foyer, you could see the entourage of press standing outside. Walking through the revolving glass door, Bobby stopped for, a, for the press. He eyed them up with a smile as they uh, begged for comment. An NBC reporter shoved the microphone in his face, asking what he thought of George Walsh's uh, recent claims about his speech yesterday. Bobby straightened up his tie. It is my opinion, he said, that uh, Governor Wallace is being slightly hyperbolic and hypocritical. I have spent the better time, part of my life, making a career to politics, which he claims I am uh, new to. He claims that I am attempting to divide the uh, National Progressive Pact and his state. Rather, when I spoke yesterday, I was drawing attention to the injustice, which should be unacceptable to the party and to Alabama. As for dividing his estate, I do not believe his state was ever behind him in the first place. As I recall, the last gubernatorial election in Alabama was little, had a little over 300,000 registered white voters and less than 20,000 black voters, even though black people comprise a quarter of Alabamans. When election day rolled around, there were almost 290,000 votes cast by white voters and less than 2,000 by black ones. Draw your own conclusions from that. But I say uh, that I could not divide the state of Alabama against uh, George Wallace because it never truly was united behind him in the first place. Good day. With that, uh, Kennedy and Guy passed through the mob of press and uh, hoped in, or hopped into the Black Lincoln Continental. Wow, Guy said. Wow is right, replied Kennedy. I'm sick of Wallace's uh, shenanigans. Now I'm still on the fence about going to Florida. Maybe we should uh, head back to Washington. I would say... Let's, let's just go home. I don't know if we want to... Uh, do anything crazy here I, th I think we just uh, we cut it sorry Florida who's, who's even in charge right now in Florida Florida right now is led by two nationalists so I, I don't know if you really care that much about it excellent RDC campaign uh, let's go to Wyoming sure get that one going Israel campaign on the West Coast operations big success we're Iberia we'd love to see it Anything else we want to do? Pro-American sentiment. You know, let's spend $50 million on the Brazilian military once again. Might uh, might be worth it there. And how are you guys doing? Inflation is still kind of crazy. So you know what? Let's fresh counter pennies once again. Is there any reason for us to make money? I guess I guess your deficit's really bad, but it, it's not, so... You, should we do like another thing of military, of, uh, military austerity? Probably not. No place like home. Robert F. Kennedy stepped into the Oval Office, sliding out of his suit jacket and nonchalantly tossing it into one of the couches near the door. It had been far too long since he had uh, seen his room of history and authority. A small mound of papers that had piled up on the Resolute's desk, while Bobby had been away giving his speeches. Bringing the country together was hard work, and who knows how successful he would be in the first place. He walked over to the massive swivel chair that sat between the windows and the desk. He sat down, kicking back and breathing in the atmosphere of relaxation. The Charity for All campaign uh, had seemed to be a nominal success, but it was hard to tell so soon after all the uh, work was said and done. Bobby didn't think of a campaign like that had ever been attempted by a sitting president. So many hours going over the fine details, with dozens of different speeches, with dozens of writers, a crusade of words had uh, flooded across America with his campaign. And only time could tell if the nation would listen. 30 days for negotiation, but I think no matter what, I think we're, we're pretty much uh, winning on that one. Let's see, because you still have 13 days. There's been a new election in Finland. Finland has elected a paternalistic leader, the National Conservatives. Polls have updated. And we're looking still at, I think, basically the exact same. One more progressive... Um, so who's what what seat are we taking for the progressives? Progressive win. Progressive win. But presumably that means that we're losing some seats then, right? Progressive is defending a seat. Progressive that's gonna go to a Democrat. So it looks like some of the seats are kind of flip-flopping, but overall we're still uh pretty happy with where we're at. I just find the vision, sure, go to pink. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter uh, too much, I would say. Because you're still... 150 is so expensive. Seen is more liberal. 
fight for workers. So, like, interestingly enough, like, fighting for workers doesn't make you more liberal. But it does bolster your, um... It, it does bolster your radical supporters, which may or may not be a good thing. The Ethiopian Civil War has finally ended after a long, long fight. Operation Success in Brazil. Should be happy to see that. Command power is looking quite nice as well. Issue negotiations, 18 days. How um how are you guys looking right now? And they expire. Everybody's still stable. Angola is still looking a little shitty. So we'll throw some more support into them. Again, we don't care about you. Eh, sure, fuck it. Let's fund some more jungle infrastructure. Maybe we can still have the, the Revolutionary Army make something of themselves. Okay, War on Poverty. More support for the Progressive and the Nationalist. Or, you know what, let's do that. Let's do the War on Poverty. Poverty, again, is one of those things where it's kind of everybody wants to fight poverty. Like, there's not really going to be anybody who's like, you know what? I fucking love poverty. I want to make all of you as poor as possible. Like, not going to say it outright, right? They're going to... They'll be a little bit more sly about it. A wedding in Sushimit. Moses Olsen has been waiting for this day for a very long time. Weddings were always a stressful affair. And uh, despite all the difficulty, frustration, tiny mistakes, it all melted away when he saw the woman he was to marry being escorted down the aisle while their family and friends watched on with smiles on their faces. His lifelong friend, Jonathan Motzfeldt, smiled at both of them. Having just completed his religious education in Canada, right in Canada, and returned a fully ordained priest. He'd been adamant that his uh, friend would be the one to marry them, even if it meant the delays of their marriage, a decision that he was glad to make, that he glad he had made. Maltzfeld began a ceremony proper, reading through the, uh, the uh, liturgy and uh, giving a short sermon where he shared a few uh, short humorous antidotes about their friendship and then finally reached the vows. Both of them had wondered what it would uh, be like to reach this moment. They'd imagined their lines over their uh, heads hundreds of times before, but it was difficult to now speak them and publicly pledge themselves to one another. When uh, they had finished, hands held in the rings exchange, Maltzfeld smiled. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may now Christ the bride. To the applause and cheers of those in attendance, the newlywed Moses and Elson Olsen kissed and exited the aisle to what would be an evening of food, dance, and celebration. Each of them knew what the uh, day ahead of them had in store. Since Moses had returned home, they were both committed to working towards a better future for their homeland. Their days will be spent working towards a future independence. One, uh, certainly a difficult goal, but uh, whose uh, worries and goals were for another day. Right now, right here, they had each other, and that was more than enough. Congrats to the newlyweds. The sins of the father. Exposed to the foibles of Washington from a young age, Robert Kennedy came to realize early in life that America is a land of contradictions. Many of his father's fellow senators professed a value of freedom and liberty above all, while simultaneously denying the fundamental rights of a great many of their own citizens for no reason other than the color of their skin. The Civil Rights Act is a step in the right direction to uh, right the wrongs of his forebears, but compared to the many injustices plaguing America, it seems but a drop in a vast, vast basin. Sitting in the Oval Office, nursing a tumbler of scotch, the president wondered why he didn't feel any sense of accomplishment. He changed the lives of millions, and yet it felt like he had hardly done anything at all. So many terrible things were still happening across America. School segregation, redlining, FBI harassment. It seemed like the list uh, kept going on and on. One, an unassailable mountain of obstacles. Kennedy felt resolute, uh, resoluteness rising in him, buoying him uh, up even as it uh, felt like he was sinking. He was the president now, and he had the power to uh, do what was right. I uh, can't rest, he thought, as he downed the scotch until it, uh, until I get it all done, even if it kills me. The wicked shall have no rest. So we're almost, like, halfway through his term, right? Like, we're already, we're already mid-66. The election is going to be in 68. Like, we're already almost approaching election season, because America has, like, a two trillion year long uh, election cycles. So the chances are, like, how much of this tree are we going to be able to get finished? It, it really depends on if we win the election in 68 as well. Because again, yeah, like, this is presumably, like, you finished everything. It, it's, um, 1972. Like, this will be the end of the line if we keep, pres if we keep, um, Kennedy in office. We still need to actually put the poll up on uh, YouTube to see how people are feeling about that. Alcatraz, Battleship Diplomacy, We Fight for America... I mean, I do want to start, you know, aligning ourselves also with taking some more support away from Japan and America, right? We want to take the, we want, we want to take all the little, uh, 
nooks and crannies. The, the ports away from them. Okay, so once you are finished, form. I maybe want to form the Job Corps next. National debt would go up. More support for the Progressive Caucus. State GDP will increase by 3.5%, which, I mean, seems insane for a little bit of debt. America's won the issue. We'd love to see you once again. Like, they are extremely pro-America right now. And that might be the last point there. I'm not, I'm not too sure. But I don't know if there's anything else. Middle Eastern oil... Tourism, agriculture, export, espionage. I think that's all of those. Italy has joined the free world. Italian-American communities across the United States erupted in celebration today as Italy officially signed legislation to join the Organization of Free Nations as a member, despite immense Japanese pressure. With this move, the Italian people have struck a valiant blow to the OFN's efforts to uh, contain the dual menaces of the Einspach and the Japanese coastal community sphere. The OFN has gained an important foothold in Europe access to the Suez Canal, and access to some of the world's largest oil reserves in the Middle East. While the Cold War is still far to be won, there's still widespread feeling among the pea population that things will finally kick up for the forces of the free world. Immediately sh uh, slightly shift support for the progressives will become way more internationalist. So are you, like, immediately in my faction? You are! And not only that, not only do we get Italy, we get uh, Croatia, we get Serbia, we get Montenegro. We get uh, we get Greece. You know, we have Libya. We have Algeria. We have Egypt. We have Yemen. We have the UAE. Like, we have now exploded in um, support. Like, okay, let's take a look at Cold War interface. How? What is, what is that for us? How many points is that? Negative 125. The answer is actually zero, but presumably because they're now in a member state of ours... They're in our sphere. It might not have updated yet, actually. Because this doesn't show Italy. I imagine Italy's got to be, like, above, you know, Venezuela or Chile in terms of their economic prosperity. But I don't know when this would, uh, potentially update. Italy has joined UFN. In a press conference, the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Italy has declared that the nation and the world that Italy has now begun the process of joining the Organization of Free Nations, the alliance and defensive treaty spearheaded by the United States of America. While ties between the two countries have existed since the 1950s, with the U.S. looking with uh, favor towards Siano's det uh, detachment from Germany, Italy has finally drawn itself in uh, towards America as a way to further counting Nazi influence in Europe. I'm going to quickly actually save the game here. Like, it's looking pretty good. What about Macedonia? Is Macedonia aligned with us? I, didn't, I never even noticed Macedonia is here. No, they're just independent. So you're paternalist. Who are you guys? Okay, Macedonia is socialist. Well, they're despots, but... Okay. I mean, you're, you're all a little despotic. Like, you're not the most, you know, liberal countries in the world, but... Still happy to have you here. Uh, production units. Let's go for another 10 for military factories. And I just want to see. I want to see this update for us. Still says 32. But, uh... Again, that should update eventually. I just don't know when that will actually be. Okay, free military factories. Let's just put that more on infantry equipment for now. Um, don't care about you... I mean, it's looking, it's looking pretty good. Champion American victories. We're leading the Cold War. 45 political power. You know what? Sure. We have a lot of political power. I'm willing to spend a little bit on that. Community outreach. Let's denounce Japanese imperialism once again. Investing administration. Okay, we have a lot of stuff in here as well. Admin costs will increase, but we'll have better um, development. Campaign for civil rights. Become more divided. East Southern Fears become more united, but we'll spend, uh, we'll become a little bit less liberal. Campaign with Wallace. Uh, chat with Goldwater. Who's Goldwater? Is Goldwater, um... I don't know who Goldwater is, honestly. I think he was one of the Dixiecrats. I mean, these are all extreme. 150 is extremely expensive. These are not cheap decisions to make at all. 
Okay, advanced armor protection. I just want to see this updated. I want to see Italy in this, please. I'm begging you. I just, I just want to see Italy. I want to know what they're up to. It might require us to save and reload. I wouldn't be too surprised by that. You know, let's invest in the administration. And again, now that we have so, now we have to have a lot of political power to play with as well. And really, nothing to really spend it on yet. Okay, the war on poverty. And then after this, we want to go for um, form the Job Corps. How can America be called the greatest nation in the world when millions of our citizens drown in abject squalor? Across the nation, children starve, workers are paid a pittance, the whole community slipped through the cracks. It's imperative that we break the cycle of poverty and lift our poor and disposed out of the great abyss. It is our duty as rulers and as fellow Americans to ensure that all of our people can rise out of poverty and be provided with the opportunities they need to pursue happiness. On his journeys across America, President Kennedy has seen poverty with uh, no other politician has. Uh, children starving in Mississippi, farm workers treated like slaves in California, blacks across the South living in utter destitution. He saw it all. And behind the proud faces of the men, he saw the shame, desperation, and resignation. He saw the emptiness in the children's eyes. Eyes from uh, which the light had long ago guttered out. And uh, thought of his own children. Those images of pain and de uh, degradation remained with him, consuming his waking thoughts, haunting his dreams. He knew he had to do something, for, uh, for whenever he closed his eyes, he saw those dark, shrunken faces crying out for their savior. But Rome was not built in a day. The president knew that his internal uh, consternation was po that, that poverty was, like everything else, twisted into a political issue by the corrupt vultures of Washington. The aid of Wallace and his cronies could be vital to the success of the first salvo of anti-poverty legislation. But would their support be worth the price? Okay. National debt. we become a little bit less liberal. We'll lose support from the unions. This will greatly anger the most hawkish members of the NPP. 10% more support for the... A uh, little bit more divided. We'll gain support from the unions. I think what we won't bow right now... They see, that they see the president as a danger to the right. Now, I don't know how bad this is. Because what is what is a danger? Because I don't know what all of the levels here are. Danger is probably not good, I would have to imagine. I'm guessing danger is probably like really bad. It's like, hey, by the way, like you shouldn't go any uh, further. There might be, I would have to imagine there's probably like one more level that's like, they see him as a fundamental threat, or or something of that uh, of that uh, persuasion. I will try to. Um, ease Southern Fears. Polls have been updated. Let's see. Let's take a look at this. Prediction is... The Nationalists will lose support. Republicans will gain support. But aside from that, no, no actual faction gains more seats. Which, I mean, is fairly reasonable, I guess. So let's save over 150 political power. Let's try to ease Southern Fears at least a little bit. you give us an event? No. Well, yes, actually, we get the opening doors of opportunity. Okay, so we got more wars going on over in Russia. They're slowly trying to unify themselves up, which is okay. France has aligned themselves with Germany. I don't think that's a big surprise. Um, they already were fascists, so... And they also don't like Burgundy. Uh, Bormann also does not like uh, Burgundy. So it makes sense that this would be the alliance that they would go for. Iberia, I would really love if you were to uh, take my side here, but I understand why you maybe won't. At, le at least right now. Free military factories. Let's go for more trucks. Sounds good. And then after that, I guess we'll go for more civilian factories when uh, when we can. So construction next. Let's increase just infrastructure just throughout the country, just at various points. That seems uh, good for me. Already see campaigns gone well. And Colombia has now exploded in the Civil War. Okay, we have a campaign available. Let's campaign in uh, the East Coast. How are we looking? 16, 32, 15. You have three, so you're not going to last too long. But the Republicans are going to have to basically fight on two different fronts. If that's the case, foreign policy, is there anything we can do with you? Sabotage supply lines. Start light bombing campaign. Let's do a bombing campaign here. Let's send a volunteer division. 
Let's provide a loan. And send military advisors. And then we let's also disrupt Colombian supply lines. We're putting a lot of effort on this immediately. Um... So we can send two divisions. People are saying send troops with helicopters. So that it will be what I will do. You have attack helicopters. So you are basic infantry. I should have more basic infantry than just that, right? We have seven. I need two of you into a brand new army. Wall is green. Nope, you're 1-1. One, one. You seem kind of actually dog shit. Let's go with uh, Brett in here. Let's send these two troops in. Now it only says one. That's cool. Okay, fine. Let's just send one division in then instead. We'll send them there. But for right now, then it's going to be a good time for the end of this episode. If you enjoyed, thumbs up. If you enjoyed, thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.